On today's Film of Friday, I show you how I make my own fidget spinner. Only this one has a switch that turns on the LEDs. I'll show you how I made this on today's Film of Friday. Film of Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. I designed the spinner in Tinkercad. In fact, some of this was actually done in my Tinkercad tips and tricks videos. If you haven't seen those, please subscribe. You won't miss them. And go back and check them out. So it started out with these two end caps. And one's taller than the other because the taller one's actually going to push the switch that lights the LED. And then the center section is a high five spinner based on Joel Telling 3D Printing Nerd's design. And inside there's a cavity and then there's a lip here to stop the bearing from going into that cavity. And that cavity is where the battery and LED leads and switch will be put together. And there's these five slots where the LED leads come through and then in the center they'll get soldered together. And then on top of that will go the battery and then the switch and then the top of the LED will come here and then the leg or the uh, little button from the end cap will push down on the wires and touch the battery and that'll complete the circuit so it's actually pretty simple and then on the bottom I put another lip here so the bearing was lifted away from that solid wall and wouldn't rub against it and that's pretty much the whole design it's not really that difficult to put together and like I said a lot of it was in those Tinkercad tips and tricks videos so once I had this it's a little tall because it had the width of the two bearings plus the battery and the LED leads and the switch so it's definitely thick for a spinner and I have no external weights on this plan. But uh, anyway, it turned out pretty good. So I just clicked on export and sent it to my printer. Here's a schematic of the LEDs connected to the battery. The switch will actually be built with just crude wires being pushed against the battery. I'll show you in the assembly. Here's all the pieces for it, including the 3D print, which came out really good. I printed this on my CR10. And even though it's a smaller print, it printed beautifully. And the dimensions were good because the bearing fit nice and snug. It seemed to spin fine. So the next step was to install the LEDs. And to do this, I put a little bit of hot glue on the bottom of the LED to hold it in place before I soldered the wires. And this seemed to work pretty good. And I bent the leads out, and I needed to get the positive lead to come in the bottom, and then the negative lead on top. And so that was something I had to keep in mind so I pre-bent all the leads so I would know which one went where and I still almost screwed it up here I got the negative going in the wrong hole and then I straightened it out and then I would just hold the LED in place and let the glue harden a little bit and then I had all the leads ready to solder together right there at the center they all kind of crossed so now I had to act like a surgeon and solder those leads together without touching the plastic or melting anything and I was able to do it, it soldered pretty easy, and then I just clipped any excess leads off. And while I did that, I noticed one of the leads was loose, so I had to go back and re-solder that. And then once that was soldered, I put the battery in with the positive side down, so now it's touching all the positives of the LED. And then I had this little spongy material that I turned into a washer. I cut the center out so the leads could touch, but it acted like a insulating spring for the rest of the wires. And then these LED leads I pushed them down as you can see as I push it down it actually makes contact with the negative side of the battery and they light up and I was worried that maybe the leads would bend and stick but that springy washer seemed to work really well so then I just soldered those five together to make the negative connection so if I have to take the battery out I'm gonna have to you know cut some wires I guess or unsolder something but overall it looked like it was working really good and then I put a metal washer in there just to make consistent contact all the way around and also to uh, keep some weight in there. It seemed to work. I tried a plastic washer, which I thought would be better, and it didn't work as well. And then I put the bearing in and then the end cap, and this thing was working great. I did find I couldn't press too hard on the switch because it would slow down the spinner. And I don't have the best bearings or any weight, so... It didn't spin excellent, but look at this in slow motion. I love how the LED streams, and in the dark, it looks even better. That's where it looks its best. So this turned out good. I'm happy with the results. That was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this one. And that switch, that really crude switch setup, it works well. So if you guys like this one, let me know. 
I know there's a lot I can do to improve it, like put weights on so it's got more momentum on the outside, and also better bearings. These aren't the best. But it's fun to play with, and the lights make it fun in the dark. By the way, Matter Hackers, I'm going to be at their booth at the Bay Area Maker Fair. I'm going to be there all three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So if you're coming to the Bay Area Maker Fair, I'll be there. Stop by and say hello. If you like what I'm doing here, check out some of my videos that are popping up over here. And if you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month is all I ask. Click on the Patreon logo. And if nothing else, if you're not a subscriber, click on my logo over here and subscribe. That's it for this week. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.